to find the equation of an exponential graph or an exponential equation if you have been given the graph you're going to need to know what the general format of the equation looks like and for an exponential graph the general layout is given as follows where p tells you if the if the exponential graph has been moved left or right q tells you if it's been moved up or down and don't worry too much about a and b typically you won't see a and b together like that usually you're going to see the following type of equation notice how there isn't an a and a b there's usually just an a but if you ever are given one with a and b which i will be covering an example like that in this video then it's fairly straightforward how to handle that so now that we know the general layout of the exponential equation, it's quite easy to find the equation if we are given the graph. Remember that Q is always going to be the asymptote. P, nine times out of ten, they're not even going to, in the in class or in the exams, they're not even going to shift the exponential graph horizontally. Remember in the previous video we mentioned that they only focus on horizontal shifts with your hyperbolas and your parabolas. Your exponential graphs, they typically don't, so P usually won't be there. So that so then all that you would actually have to find after that would have been a you would find a by substituting in a point Now how are you going to know if the graph is shifted or not because it's quite difficult to see on an exponential? The way to tell is in the question or in the exam they'll typically say please find the equation of the exp exponential graph in the following form and then the form that they're typically going to give you to find will be as follows so the form that you're typically going to be asked for in class is as follows. So in summary, the most complicated or most complex version of the exponential graph is this one over here. Then in yellow is when they've taken out the B. That's not even that common. And then here with this one that I'm ringing again, or the one that I'm circling twice, that's the typically the most common form you'll see for exponential graphs. It doesn't mean that you're not going to see the other two. When you do see the other two, the way of solving is usually just to substitute points in after you've filled in your asymptote. And then what usually ends up happening is you end up with a simultaneous equation or something like that. So you typically want to substitute in your asymptote and then fill in other points until you are at a point where you can solve. Let's try some examples. So number one, we're finding the equation in the following form. Notice that there isn't a plus p next to the x, meaning that this graph hasn't shifted left or right. So the first thing we're going to do is fill in our asymptote, which is a value of 1. That'll be your q value, right? So let's do that. Now we can fill in some points. Notice we have a and b that still needs to be found. So a little trick I like to show people is the following. We've got two points that we have available to substitute. Both of them can be substituted, but there's one that works out better for the first substitution. Check this out. The x value for this coordinate is 0. So if you had to plug that in, that's going to make that b to the power of 0. Now anything to the power of 0 is 1, which is going to cause that b term to simply fall away, and then you're only left with a. That wouldn't have happened if you used the 1 and the 3. So let's substitute the 0 and the 2 first. So there we can see after substituting, we end up with b to the power of 0. Remember, it's only the b that is to the power of 0. So the a will still be there, but the b to the power of 0 just becomes a 1. So it just falls away. So then we can proceed to solve. And then if you solve for a, you get an answer of... And there we have a as 1. So we don't even have to put a back into the equation because a 1 in front of the b is the same as just having the b. Okay, so we can consider the a, we can just remove that from the equation. And so all that we have left over is the following. And so there we can see we have y equals to b to the power of x plus 1. So we only have the b to find. So now we can substitute another point, which is the 1 and the 3 and then you can solve for b and you'll get an answer of there we go so now we have everything so now we can answer the question by filling all the letters that we have found and so the final answer will be as follows y equals to 2 to the power of x plus 1 let's go to another example so here's number 2 
they've given us the the form of the equation that they are looking for and so it's e fairly easy to know that q is equal to 2 because that's your asymptote and so there we fold that in remember our little trick we would like that b with the x to become b to the power of 0 because then that just falls away and then we can find a so should we substitute this point or this point first this one is the better one so let's do that and we can fill that into the equation and there we can see that b to the power of 0 which just becomes 1 which sort of just falls away it doesn't mean that the answer for b is 1 it just means that in that particular equation b will be 1 or no sorry b to the power of 0 that whole term will be 1 so it just disappears and so now we can solve for a and so we get a as 1 and so remember because it's so a is 1 we don't really have to fill it into the equation because you can if you would like to but having 1 in front of the b is the same as not having it there okay because yeah now the only thing that's left for us to find is b so to find that we will substitute the 4 and the 1 but let's first write out what our equation looks like so far and so there we can see our equation so far y equals to b to the power of x plus 2 so to find b we'll substitute the minus 1 and the 4 so the 4 goes in the place of y and the minus 1 in the place of x and so there we can see, you can see that we have filled in the b to the minus 1 we have b to the minus 1 and we've we've got we filled in the 4 for the y value now what we could typically do is move the 2 over to the left and then 4 minus 2 will become 2 and then b to the minus 1 is the same as saying 1 over b. Remember, when you're solving this, you want to get b to the top. So let's times b on the left-hand side. So we'll end up with 2b equals to 1. And then you can get b by itself by dividing by 2. And so we're going to end up with b equals to a half. And so we can fill in the final equation as follows. y equals to a half to the power of x plus 2. And that's the end of this video.